Monty Lutz. Thank you. Have you been sworn as a witness? Yes, I have. All right, fine. Thank you. Just have a seat. Mr. Lutz, in 78, you were one of the firearms experts chosen from around the country by the House Select Committee on Assassinations to re-examine the firearm evidence in the Kennedy case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Lutz, I want you to identify, if you can, certain items of evidence I'm going to put on the screen. Exhibit 130. What's that? This is the, uh, what was Commission Exhibit 399, or the Conley Stretcher Bullet, uh, okay. caliber 6.5. You examined this bullet personally? Yes, I did. Was there any indication at the archives where this bullet was found, you say? It was indicated to have come from the uh, stretcher of Governor Conley. At Parkland Memorial Hospital? Yes, sir. Was it your finding that the um, Conley stretcher bullet was fired from Oswald's Carcano rifle to the exclusion of all other weapons? That is true. Did you look at a photograph of two damaged bullet fragments, but two bullet fragments found in the front seat of the limousine? Yes, I did. Your panel conducted a comparison microscope examination of these two fragments? Yes, we did. And the findings? findings were that each of the fragments uh, were fired through the rifle or the Oswald rifle. Exhibit 120. For the record, this is a photograph of the three casings as they were found near the sixth floor window shortly after the assassination of the Book Depository building. Did your firearm panel conduct a comparison microscope examination of these casings? Yes, we did. And what were your findings? Our findings were that the, all three cartridge cases had been fired in the bolt-action rifle CE-139. That's Oswald's Carcano rifle? Yes, sir. Mr. Lutz, there has been evidence at this trial that the uh, assassin fired three shots from the sixth floor window of the Book Depository building, two of which hit President Kennedy. There has been further evidence that the time interval between the first and third shots was 8.2 seconds. Now, you have personally fired Oswald's Carcano, is that correct? Yes, I have. Would you describe the operational capability of Oswald's Carcano rifle to the jury? The capabilities would be uh, very capable of hitting targets uh, at relatively short distances, up to 300 yards. So it has the capability of being fired uh, quite rapidly at uh, those distances. In other words, not a great rifle, but an efficient rifle. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you feel only an expert marksman could aim and fire three shots from Oswald's Carcano in 8.2 seconds? No, I do not. It would be very easy? Uh, quite easy, yes. Mr. Lutz, I have a tougher question for you. The evidence has shown that the interval between the first and second shots may, and I italicize the word may, have been as low as just over two seconds. Given the fact that the Carcano requires the operation of the bolt between shots, is it feasible to fire, operate the bolt, aim and fire again in just over two seconds with that Carcano? Yes, it would be very possible. Mr. Lutz, going back to the possibility of firing three shots with the Carcano with a reasonable degree of accuracy within 8.2 seconds, in May of this year, did I ask you to attempt to duplicate what Oswald did? That yes. is, fire one shot and then two more within 8.2 seconds. Uh, yes, you did. You use a 6.5 millimeter Mannlicher Carcano. That is correct. Not Oswald's, obviously. No, sir. What firing conditions and targets did you set up? I placed three targets, one at 57 yards, one at 72 yards, and one at 87 yards from the firing point. I then proceeded to fire five uh, sequence uh, shots, three shots each at those targets and record the time that it required to fire all of the targets. And what were the results of your test? The results were that I was able to hit two of those three targets uh, at the 57 and 87 yard distances. The second target I uh, missed because of the rapid uh, repeating of the fire on all of the shots except one. So one time I hit all three targets in 3.6 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Lutz. No further questions. Mr. Spence? <clears throat> well, Mr. Lutz, we haven't hold, told the whole story to the jury, have we? Uh, not that I know of, sir. I mean, there's a lot of things that we need to tell the jury about your testimony that hasn't been told. Isn't that true? That's probably true, yes, sir. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, sir. First of all, Let's talk about the experiment that you did. Uh, would it be true that in the history of the whole world, to your knowledge, nobody has ever duplicated what Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to have done with that supposed rifle 
from the sixth floor of the Texas Book Depository. That's true, isn't it? I do not know of any test that's been done from the school book depository or in attempt to just duplicate it. No, sir. You don't know of anybody that's even um, duplicated that anywhere, do you? School book depository or elsewhere. You didn't, did you? Wait a while. He didn't, he didn't uh, answer your first question. You got two questions. You Let me know, just... Go ahead. You don't know of any... Let's put it... Let's just do this right. Number one, you don't know of anybody that's ever duplicated what uh, Lee was supposed to have done, do you? I do not. Not even master, master marksman. Isn't that true? I do not. You told the jury about the test that you did. Remember? Yes, sir. The shots that you did? Yes. Where did you shoot from? I fired from a range uh, on a grassy area in the state of Wisconsin. We oh. had a rifle range there. Oh, you were at a range. Your feet were on the floor or on the ground. Is that right? Uh, on the floor or ground, yes, sir. Uh, was the, the target that you were shooting at moving? No, it was not. It was stationary? Much like would have been the situation with the president. Please, was it stationary? Yes, sir. Um, all right. And you missed it even under those ideal conditions? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Now, let's look at the gun that was involved. You did look at the gun that was involved, didn't you? Yes, sir. And wasn't it the panel's conclusion that the scope was so poor on this rifle that it was better that you could shoot better if you shot without the scope and shot the iron sights? It was my opinion more that the iron sights would have been a better uh, technique to use as opposed to the scope. And yet, you believe that the so-called assassin, man like my client Lee, under pressure, who is a poor shot or marginal shot to begin with, could perform with this gun in a manner that today has never once been duplicated by a single marksman, not even the best. Is that correct? Not exactly correct, no, sir. All right. Mr. Lutz, you've been of great help to us and uh, appreciate it very much that you've come to be with us. I have no further questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lutz.